What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Darium's Competitive Pokemon, rolling a game on PTCGO with Decidueye GX. This is probably my favorite deck in standard format right now. I think that it is an underexplored archetype considering how good it is. I think it's underrepresented in the metagame right now. I think Decidueye is really just as good as it was uh, pre-rotation with Force of Giant Plants. It's just the, the standard, the format is just different now. It looks like I'm playing against Volcanion, so we're going to get to see this matchup firsthand. This is the matchup that took me out in day two of Swiss at Hartford Regionals. This is, you know, the Achilles heel of Decidueye. We do have a couple tricks up our sleeve, though. There are some things we could do. This matchup is not a total loss. So I'm excited about it, actually, because I think this is just a really good, close matchup. Uh, it could go either way. Uh, I don't feel totally down and out about it. So uh, hopefully we can get a good game going here for you guys. Hopefully I set up. Hopefully I don't prize my nine tails because we are definitely going to be depending on those. Uh, and look who we start. We got ourselves an Espeon. Yeah, this is not where you belong, Espeon. You do not belong here whatsoever. This is not your home. You do not belong in this matchup. Get off the field. <laughs> Sit the bench. This is not your time to shine. This is bad. Uh, this is fine, though. Whatever, you know. I mean, going second, that's not good. Start an Espeon, that's not good. Uh, opponent, opponent gets a T1 Kiawe. That's not exactly what you want either. But uh, we we got we got some moves. We can make some moves. This is fine. Uh, my opponent, you know, definitely looking pretty aggressive there. We're going to go with the turn one Bridget. And we're going to see who we got. We only got one Vulpix a deck, so that is bad. And then let's see. Three Rowlet. That's fine. I could go in with Latios early. Could go in with Tapu Koko promo, promo early as well. I think I'm just going to go for like a big old setup with some Decidueyes and Vulpix here. And uh, I'm going to make my opponent, you know, knock out that Vulpix the hard way. I'm just going to get two... I mean, we're, we're going to get two Decidueyes on the, the second turn of the game. And we're going to pray that this kind of buffs out from there. Obviously, this is a little bit of like a high-risk play here. But my opponent has got such an aggressive start with this Turtonator active. Having prized a Vulpix myself, I'm not in a great position. Uh, so I, I feel like I'm just going to go in here, hope that, you know, hope that uh, maybe my board position could kind of buff out. Hope that maybe my opponent doesn't get too much going on other than this one lone Turtonator in the active. Looks like they're going to end me. They see me go for my two Decidueyes, and they're like, yeah, no, no, don't do that. Don't, you know, don't get two Decidueyes on turn two. So they're just going to end me out of this hand, and they're probably just going to smack away at my Vulpix. That's fine. Really would have liked the two the two Decidueyes. Maybe then I could have gone in with a Tapu Koko, or maybe I could have gone in with a uh, with the Latios. Uh, this is a Ho-Oh Salazzle deck, so I guess the Espeon's not completely useless. All right, man, come on. You know, like 160 damage to my poor little Vulpix. Like, man, that's not exactly what we want. So let's see here. We're going to go in with Dartrix. I pretty much got, what, nothing to do here with this Espeon. I don't want no rainbows on it, nothing. Uh, I definitely want to try and hit a... DCE and a Latios or something like that. So ugh. either way, it feels bad. I might just sack the Espeon, to be honest, and just let it take a big old hit. Uh, I don't really want to put the Rainbow Energy on Dartrix just because it feels like a waste of time. Let's just end this hand away and see what we get off the draw. We actually got like a very reasonable hand, actually, except for the fact that we have no supporter in it. So let's see. We can Rescue Stretcher for the Vulpix back. I actually don't mind that too much. Uh, I can put a Rowlet down. Yeah, let's let's Rescue Stretcher. Let's get a Pokemon from our discard pile. Let's grab that Vulpix. Just the consistency of Vulpix. Love it here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I think, you know, eventually I'm probably going to want to use Latios here. Uh, instead of Tapu Koko, I feel like he just does more. So I'm going to grab the Latios, bench it and retreat into Vulpix, and then I am just going to beacon, and we are going to grab, I guess, a Dartrix and a Tapu Lele. And the reason we didn't grab the Decidueye quite yet is because we don't want to just, like, serve up 
you know, GX prizes to my opponent. We eventually are going to want to get these Decidueye out, but since we're not getting them out quickly, at this point, we are playing the slow game. Like, we are playing, like, the hope we get out some Decidueyes at the end of the game after we could kind of wipe some attackers off my opponent's side of the field, wipe out the threat, and then put all my Decidueyes into play at the same time. And then, you know, hopefully we could kind of overwhelm my opponent that way. So... Uh, this is definitely my, you know, my opponent is definitely favored here. Going first, getting the turn one Kiawe on a turn eater. Interestingly enough, I do not think that the, the regional winning, uh, Volcanian list actually played Kiawe. They just opted for pure speed. They were playing like maybe four max elixir. Uh, they were playing enhanced hammer. I know that, uh, lots of fighting fury belts, lots of little Volcanians. So now you can see, okay, so now is the time. We're going to go and we can get, start to get some Decidueyes into play. Hopefully, we're going to go in with Choice Band, Double Colorless, and we're going to evolve here, and we're going to use Tapu Lele, and we're going to go find a Supporter card. Yup, we do want a Supporter. Uh, we have 3N and 4 Sycamore. Let's see what the rest of my hand looks like. Let's just go in with Sycamore. At this point, we're going to save my ends for the end of the game. Hopefully, we can limit my opponent as the game begins to dwindle down, we'll put a choice band on the Tapulele and Sycamore. See what else we got here. We got ourselves another Dartrix. I am cool with that. And we got a Rescue Stretcher. So we could actually put the Tapu Coco and the Vulpix back into the deck. I don't mind that. We'll probably just go ahead and do that. We're going to shuffle Pokemon into the discard. So we like Tapu Coco. We like Vulpix. We're definitely going to want that Vulpix back. I only play two, so a little bit of a bummer that we prized one, but that's fine. You expect that in this kind of situation. And I am going to hit, yeah, the Turtonator and the Slazzle. Those are going to be, those are my two guys with energy on them. So I'm just going to put all the damage there. And if you look, I mean, my opponent's in a board position where they're not really poised to deal with the Latios. I mean, if they do get a Floatstone and then they evolve up into Slazzle, then they can hit me for 110 damage. However, uh, they will be leaving their board position like relatively weak if they do that. They're probably going to want to Nitro Tank right now. I think that is just the most reasonable course of action for my opponent to do but if my opponent nitro tanks then they leave this latios up here who is just plugging away doing 60 30 it's just a lot of damage you know uh so they're really allowing that to rack up and i think awesome so they nitro tank for four i'm gonna end them next turn uh even though they didn't play a supporter card you know i'm a little wary of that but i mean i don't think i necessarily want to ditch all these supporters so i'm definitely going to end up ending and uh, what's sketchy here, though, is if my opponent does get a Guzma off the end, they are just going to be able to bomb whatever they want with that ho -Oh. So uh, that's not exactly great, but I think these are, these are just, you know, this is play that we just got to make at this point. We got to hope that, you know, the end does not net them a... Uh, does not net them a Guzma. We could wait. I mean, we could wait a turn on the on the Decidueye so that if my opponent does have a Guzma right here, they could Guzma up something like Tapu Lele or the Espeon, and then we'll end them one more time and then evolve into two Decidueyes. Like, that is an option. But I think at this point, we want to just rack up as much damage as we can. Uh, I don't want my opponent just to get back-to-back -to -back to Guzmas anyway without me doing this damage with the Decidueye. So I'm going to make things a lot harder here uh, for my opponent. Let's see. Now we can knock out the Salandit. The Salandit is a little bit troubling because he is just if he evolves up into um, if he evolves up into a Salazzle, like if my opponent takes more prizes, like that is just going to be very stressful. So I think I am going to double Feather Arrow and knock out the Salandit which is just so good. I mean, you, you're seeing firsthand here just how good this Latios math is like working out for me. I am loving it. Just the, the 30 damage there on the Slandit making it just an easy knockout for, uh, for my dude there. And then I can actually, weirdly enough, I can actually Ultra Ball. I could get another Decidueye. I don't fit. Yeah, right? I, could, I should be able to get another Decidueye. Let's see. 
I didn't just evolve this Dartrix this turn. Sometimes when I'm commentating, guys, I forget. I forget what I've done during the turn. So apologize there. But yeah, we could actually get the third decidualize. So that's cool. And I'm going to be able to feather arrow the Ho-Wo. And now we are going to do just a massive amount of damage with this Latios. Uh, and you can see here the Latios is... I, I think that it is better than Tapu Koko promo in a lot of situations. He is really pulling a lot of weight here. The 10 damage just adds up over the course of a couple of turns. Now my opponent's in a weird position where if they Guzma and they knock out a Decidueye, I end them again and could just do a lot of damage to their Ho-Oh. And I am looking to be able to sweep things here if I could take out these two GXs. So they are going to Guzma. I knew it, uh, but that's fine. They've left my Latios B, so I just need to end them one more time. Hope that they do not snatch a Guzma off this end to two. And that's really the best thing that I could go for here. Uh, I've got a lot of damage on my opponent's side of the field that I'm ramping up. So let's just end and hope for the best. Hopefully my opponent does not get another Guzma here. That would be bad. So I think my best course of action, uh, let's see if I do actually, okay, this is interesting. If I do, I could do a hundred damage here with Lagoon Flight. If I do a hundred, I could actually do 140 and knock out the ho -Oh completely. Uh, that would be an insane play. So look at here. Uh, Lagoon Flight getting in there, and this is another reason why I think just this Latios is just so much better than the Tapu Koko promo, because look at this. You cannot do this with the Tapu Koko promo, even if I lose this matchup. I mean, this thing is an all-star. Look at him getting in there. Uh, I'm not even missing the free retreat at all. I am loving this thing through and through. So now my opponent needs a lot of cards. They need not only a... That is insane. Look at that. Uh, not only do they need a Guzma to win the game, they need Guzma Fire Energy to win the game. And if they don't get a Fire Energy to knock out my active Latios uh, with this Turtonator, and even if they do knock out the active Latios with Turtonator, they put themselves in a bad situation because they leave themselves with one energy on board. So I wonder what their Ultra Ball is. They're going to get a Lele, but they can't go for Guzma because Guzma will not get them to game. They have to go for Sycamore, something like that. But I saved my ends. You saw that one turn. I said that I wanted to save my ends. I saved my ends. I got one more end here. So I wonder what my opponent is going to do. They're going to have to attach an energy somewhere. They're probably going to have to attach this active Turtonator and then discard in order to knock out my, active, my Latios. I'm going to have this hand here guaranteed. They can't really accelerate any more energy. So at this point, if I could just get... Do I have any energy left in deck? I do. I've got I've got double colorless out the wazoo in my deck. I should have three left. So then I'm going to be in a good position. I could knock out the Turtonator. Then I just have one more prize to take. If my and my opponent definitely has to knock out this Latios, or they are just in a bad, bad position. Because Latios is just putting on so much pressure to my opponent's side of the field with that breakthrough attack. Lagoon flight. My opponent probably did not see that coming. I didn't even really see the Lagoon Flight play, I thought that ho -Oh was going to be putting on a lot more pressure, uh, you know, that a lot more than one turn anyways. But Lagoon Flight getting in there with Feather Arrow combined doing 140 damage for that turn is in... Oh, and my opponent did not get the energy. They just have to Shell Trap. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so what do we do here? We are closing this one in. My opponent has got... Uh, two prizes left to take. I have to knock out the Turtonator uh, because then my opponent could potentially win the game with Turtonator if I don't take it out. So I need to take it out. Uh, I can do, what, if I do 30, then that's 150. I can snipe it twice. So I can Guzma something up. Uh, I think I'm going to Guzma up the Volcanion here since I do not want to take Shell Trap's damage. Uh, or I could Guzma up a Volcanion EX. Uh, then I'm doing more damage to it. Uh, oh, geez. Yeah, let's... Uh, yeah, I think just make it a little more awkward for my opponent. I don't necessarily want to invite the Volcanion up since that's just going to make it... Um, that's just going to make it easier for my opponent to be able to win the game because then uh, they could actually just start use, using Power Heater potentially. So I think I am just going to go with this route. I'm going to double feather arrow the 
Turtonator and then knock out the Turtonator doing 60 damage to the active Volcanion. So I'm getting some mileage out of this choice band as well. Obviously, the little Volcanion has more hit points, but I'm bringing up the, the Volcanion EX just so it's one more card my opponent has to hit in order to close this game out. Now, uh, we're going to use Breakthrough again, knock out that Turtonator. Obvious, man, I, just, I know I've said it a million times, but I mean, the games that I have played with Latios in deck, ha Latios has been an all-star in all of them. Uh, the Breakthrough's 10 damage, the 10 more damage we get from Breakthrough has been significant over and over again. Uh, and I just think that it, you know, it, it's just so good. Um, my opponent probably not going to get the knockout on my Latios here. You can see they did get the Flowstone. They did get the Sycamore. Uh, they would need to do nine, what, 80 damage. So they would need to Power Heater and then Steam Up twice. So they would need three energy. They play a Poe Town in their Volcanion list. This is probably an effort to, to uh, what, damage Gardevoir, bring Gardevoir GX's hit point down into Oko range, but I'm not a big fan of Poe Town in this deck. Looks like my opponent, oh, they are tired of the Latios. They do not want this thing around. They are not happy with it. So they are going to go ahead and just go in with Tapu Lele GX on my Latios. That is a little sketchy, actually, uh, because that leaves my opponent with one prize remaining. Uh, I'm going to be able to end them, uh, but not exactly sure here. Uh, I have double colorless energy, so I guess my best course of action is just going to be to try and get some energy onto a Lele and hope that my opponent doesn't get anything powered up that could deal with Lele. Uh, I wonder how many Guzma. I do have, should have a Guzma left in deck. Uh, fortunately, my opponent has not killed any of these Floatstones yet, so I am enjoying the free retreat, though I did have Floatstone here. Um, I think we... Oh, end to one just seems so bad, uh, but I think we have to just do it and hope that my opponent does not get anything um, anything else? Let's take a quick look at my deck and see what we got in there. I'm gonna bench this. We do have a sycamore. Um, let's see. I think my opponent might actually be favored. Uh, let's see if I if I do end a one. Uh, I don't know. It's such a weird situation. Let's wonder tag. We do have Guzma left in deck. Max potions. Three double colorless. We would obviously just like to go for a double colorless. Let's see if we get a double colorless. That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 10. Okay, I think we actually just have to go for Sycamore. Uh, my opponent cannot win the game next turn. So let's just do it. Uh, we're going to go ahead, go for Sycamore. And by doing this, my opponent, they cannot win the game. I mean, there is nothing here for them to cheap shot. I mean, maybe they could, if they max Elixir, uh, all four max licks are in the discard pile. It's not happening. So they have no way to do it. So I am going to just slap a uh, float stone down on the Lele. And we've got a field blower. We're going to field blower my opponent's float stone and their Potown. All right. And then we are going to Sycamore and hope to get a double colorless energy so we can just pile as much damage as possible onto this Tapu Lele. We did get it. So I don't think I'm putting myself in danger here. If my opponent does 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, I mean, they're probably only going to be hit like 130 or something if they do respond with some energy on this Tapu Lele to energy drive my Tapu Lele. And this is a power play for me, though, because now my opponent is in danger of losing the game. I just double feather arrow to the Tapu Lele. And if they don't do something, if they do not heal this Lele, uh, or take out a Decidueye or something, I am just going to win the game next turn with uh, with Feather Arrow alone. All I need to do is Feather Arrow one time. My opponent needs to end this game right now. I think even though I Sycamored, even though I did not, even though I did not restrict the resources, I think that there's no way that they pull out a win this turn. I don't have anything on my board. I intentionally Sycamored away that Vulpix, so they don't have the option to Guzma on my Vulpix. They are really strapped for resources from what I can tell. Uh, so we should be in the clear here. I uh, expect my opponent probably to concede the game. I don't think there's a whole lot that they can do. So as you guys can see, there are some ways to finagle a fire matchup 
for Decidueye. I mean, you just have to not attack with Decidueye, really. Um, obviously, uh, I mean, I was super impressed with Latios this game. I mean, I think Latios is the difference maker in this deck. I mean, he is he is pulling a lot of weight. He is knocking out huge Pokemon. That second attack actually is proven to be really good. 100 damage on a non-EX if they just happen to be Guzmaing around your, your Latios, which is what these fire decks will do because they don't want to knock out the Latios. They want to knock out a big EX. They want to take out a Decidueye. They want to take out a Tapu Lele. So obviously you can make them pay by going in with 100 damage. That is just a whole heck of a lot. So uh, good game to my opponent. They're going to end up scooping there. I had win on board. Thank you all for watching. We were able to win that matchup. David and Goliath here. Uh, the grass deck against the fire deck. Pretty cool. I didn't even get nine tails into play. Was able to get that one scrapped away with only using Latios, Lele's. Pretty cool stuff. So thank you all for checking out the video. Let me know what you all think of Decidueye and Volcanion in the comments below. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Peace.